Hi, I'm Greg Kite, and this is your May 2011 accounting update. That sounds pretty good. <laughs> because he has an MBA and a CPA. Please put your hands together for Greg Kite, everybody. Hello, uh, good evening. My name is Greg Kite, and I'm here to talk to you tonight about the current trends and issues in the accounting profession. In the uh, May Journal of Accountancy, there was a checklist for CPA firms to think through as they're uh, renewing their business insurance. One of the items on the list said uh, to make sure that you find a policy that includes cyber liability. And by cyber liability, they meant coverage in case you have a data security breach, not that your insurance guy is going to throw in two tickets to the next Terminator movie, which incidentally is titled Cyber li Liability. That's what that is. Yeah. Adi vista, baby. Come, come with me if you want to avoid the alternative minimum tax. Yeah. No, relax. Okay? I know that in the comedy world, Arnold Schwarzenegger impersonations are considered hack, but in the accounting world, they're still cutting edge. So relax, people. Uh, the, uh, there's a concern in the accounting profession that we're not training the next generation of accountants, especially to build their business development skills. It says uh, that the current thinking is you need to get these young CPAs in non-threatening, low-risk settings to build those skills. And they say specifically to put these young CPAs in a high school to speak to math and accounting classes. No. A young CPA speaking in a public high school is a high-risk setting. There are jocks and like lots of skaters there. And any trained CPA knows that they will kick your ass after class. And, and what's awesome is they say, what, what should these young CPAs talk about to these high school students? It says they should, they should give a speech about how cool it is to be a CPA. Yeah, yeah, that's going to be the world's shortest speech, okay? Well, I mean, what would, what would they even say? They'd say something like, dude, chicks like totally lit dig the long position on hedging securities. hi -o! You know, or, uh, or, hey kids, who's got two thumbs and knows how to successfully import data from QuickBooks to UltraTax? Uh, this guy! You know? Or, or maybe they'll say something like, what other profession besides accountants are completely obsessed with exposing their standards in public, after which they're almost universally accepted? In the, I mean, in the United States, not, not abroad, but U.S. standards, they'll, they'll influence international stand, standards. Yeah. Um, uh, New information out about the CPA exam, about the questions that they have in there. Every, every single uh, question on the CPA exam has three different statistical characteristics. Is it easy or hard? Is it discriminating or non-discriminating? And is it easy to guess or hard to guess? And apparently they even have nicknames for all these different types of questions. Certain types of questions have nicknames. Like for instance, there's a type of question that's called the transvestite. It's easy, it's non-discriminating, but it's really hard to guess. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Uh, FASB chairman Leslie Seidman says it's going to take at least through the end of the year to finish uh, the process of converging U.S. GAAP with international uh, financial reporting standards. Well, yeah, that's a, that's a pretty realistic timeline, especially considering how quickly we took to the metric system. I know. Guys, okay, this is accounting humor, people, all right? Okay, it's not just all puns using the word assets. Now, uh, in, the, in the May Journal of Accountancy, there was also an article that was entirely devoted to in-plan Roth conversions, which are very, very popular here in Utah, as is pretty much anything that has to do with conversions. Um, and... Uh, and for this month's installment of Just How Effed Up Is Our Tax Code, we'll be discussing scholarships and their determination of dependency for, uh, for different taxpayers' uh, children. Uh, let's see if you can try to wrap your brain around this sentence uh, from the tax code. The scholarship exclusion does not apply to a non-child qualifying child. 
Okay, did you hear that, that, that really faint popping sound? That was the sound of thousands of tax accounts having aneurysms, okay? It says, uh, it does not apply to a non-child -quali non qualifying child, which still doesn't make sense even after you've had some non-alcoholic qualifying alcohol. <laughs> Guy, I'm, guys, I'm Craig Kite, and that was your May 2011 accounting update. Thank you so much.